So it's very exciting to be part of this, and, and not only in the heart, but it's also in the carotid arteries, in the legs, as well as the kidney. So the, the, the body is formed of multiple tubes, and that's where the scaffolding mechanism of the stents keep the arteries open. <clears throat> now, you see this cardiolite stress testing. You know, patients come, you hooked up um, with the 12 lead EKG, and then you, we have the machine, we have the crash cart, so if nobody can be, you know, worry about that. We have a defibrillator at site, we have all the medication, should and an incident um, uh, take place, you, uh, that, that we could, uh, um, you know, manage with it and take care of it. And, um, you know, if people cannot exercise, they can get a chemical stress test. Now remember, only God is perfect. You know, you do a million, you're gonna get one out of the million or whatever. But it's, it's so far we had zero, but you had, you know, this is the stuff, you know, you know, like my boss in New York and you heard his name, Gambino. He was the highest cathing physician in the country. Not, not just in the Northeast, you know, we used to do 30 cases a day. By lunch, we're done 15 or 10, and I was his fellow. So, you know, we go around from one cath to the other, even without taking the lid off. And then, if you do enough cases, you will run into something. And that's have to be honest. You got, you got to be honest about it. But as long as it's within the acceptable range, then you know, national numbers, you know, this is acceptable and this is unacceptable. And so on and so forth. We tell you this because honesty is the most important thing in this, in this kind of field, like anything else in life. So we take pictures of the heart that tells us, you know, from this, you know, we exercise, increase the blood flow. We put a, we induce a stress to see how the heart is going to handle that. And we got, we got our man here, John. Stand up, be recognized. John is our <laughs> nuclear, nuclear man. He, uh, he shines in the dark. <laughs> so if you see some, you know, something shining up, you know, going to uh, Brooksville office, that's, that's uh, John. So we appreciate, does a good job, very good job in, in putting, you know, he injects the people when during the time that we tell him, go ahead, John, and inject. So he injects that, and then the images are processed from, you know, from those exercise, you know, images into what we see the pictures, and we take two sets of pictures and we compare them, and that helps us, oh, this man has blockage in the front or the side or the bottom, or this man has only a scar tissue from previous heart attack, or this lady has only breast artifact, and a lot of people read it wrong as a blockage, but it's not. So there's a lot of art in reading this, but like I said, we have national accredited lab and we're very proud of the quality of the work. Again, this is another test that we do. It's called echocardiography with Doppler. It's a sonogram of the heart, like the sonogram of the baby. We try to see the heart itself, muscle function. We look into the valves function. We look into sometimes we used to do invasive procedure to measure pressures in the heart, but we can do this non-invasively with the echo. It's a beautiful tool, especially to assess all this together. Very, very non-invasive, very safe, and no side effects. Um, and we have, Barbara couldn't make it today, but she's one of the awesome um, you know, echocardiographer, you know, scanner uh, uh, technician that does really a wonderful job and very pleasant. So basically, this tells us, Doc, I'm passing out. <laughs> and then I listen to the, you know, the gentleman, and he have this critically narrowed aortic valve. Well, that explains it, you know. Then, then if he has symptomatic, then we turn him over, and I have one of my colleagues, one of the cardiac surgeons, go to OKL. He, I don't know if he, he's stuck. He was supposed to come, Dr. Michael Wall. We work very closely together, and then, and then go and, and fix that valve or, you know, uh, repair it if, if need to, so. Cardiac catheterization is a procedure that allows the doctor to study the condition of the heart, including the muscle, valves, and arteries, using a catheter and special dye. First, the doctor chooses an artery for the catheter entry site. Most commonly, an artery in the groin area of the leg is used. However, an artery in the bend of the elbow may also be used. 
Once the area is numb, the doctor will insert an introducer, which is a thin plastic tube, into the artery. Through this, a guide wire is lowered into the artery and a catheter, a small flexible tube, is inserted over the wire and carefully advanced to the heart, through the aorta and to the coronary arteries. The catheter movement is viewed on an x-ray screen. Once the catheter reaches the coronary arteries, dye is injected into them. This special dye shows up on the x-ray screen and allows the doctor to see the blockages that may be present. The doctor will repeat the injection of dye several times, looking at the arteries from many different angles. After the arteries have been examined, the catheter will be redirected to the left ventricle. This is to test how the ventricle is contracting and if the valves are functioning properly. The doctor will then take out the catheter and the introducer. You know, um, some people say, Doc, you know, the patient just walked in. You're done already? I'm sorry, you know, my, my former boss, you know, used to say, well, I'm sorry it took so long, you know. You know, it's, you know, before it used to be like, you want to say, when going in, they'll block you for one hour. You know, it takes only a few minutes, basically, bottom line. And, you know, you know, and, um, you know, you always have to be humble, and, and always, no matter what. And I've done a few thousands of them. And you just have to, you know, always be humble, always be careful, always look in, into different things, and always be religious about what you're going to do. And, uh, you know, most of the people, you know, they end up, you know, having jokes and laughter and, you know, uh, uh, tell us about different uh, things. Um, and, uh, one of my patients, Albano, are you here? You know, he, he got this soup joke, you know, that he loves it. So anyway, um, this is about a cardiac catheterization. You know, we, we you know, there's no, uh, and I tell this to a lot of folks. I'm going to, you know during the cardiac catheterization, there is no circumcision and there's no sex change. <laughs> you, 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 you go in and you go out exactly the same, no change in the voice or anything. Because <laughs> they say you put me under it. Actually, we, we have him come and be alert and, 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 and just relax, take the edge off, because we asked him to turn the head to the right, to the left, the camera come and rotate around him. So we need a little cooperation with them. And we give him two hot pictures to warm him up and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a very good, you know, a procedure. We have a great team uh, in Oak Hill Hospital, really the best, the best team in town. So this is the other service. In During the EECP therapy, the patient lies on a treatment table with large blood pressure-like cuffs wrapped around the patient's calves, thighs, and buttocks. The EECP treatment is timed to the patient's heartbeat. While the heart is at rest, the treatment cuffs inflate in sequence from the calves to the thighs to the buttocks. Just before the next heartbeat, all the cuffs deflate at the same time. The squeezing action of the cuffs increases blood flow to the blood vessels that supply the heart muscle, increasing the amount of oxygen-rich blood being delivered to the heart. When all the cuffs deflate at the same time, the amount of work the heart has to do to pump blood out to the body is lowered due to a decrease in the resistance to blood flow. For many patients, completing 35 one-hour treatments of EECP therapy may result in the recruitment and or enlargement of small blood vessels, known as collaterals, that can increase the blood supply to the heart muscle, decreasing their chest pain, fatigue, and shortness of breath. There is also evidence that other major organs, such as the kidneys and the brain, receive additional blood supply.